welcome back to the Salbras channel. I'd first of all like to send a shout out to AMZ's Automotive Corner for doing a lengthy video on how to uh, add adjustable rear suspension to a Saab 9.5. Uh, I've seen this before, but on this car it is showing signs of uh, negative camber wear and inner tire wear. Um, and this one is a 2009.5 Aero. Uh, I'll be doing this upgrade as an alternative to shims. So once you get the car up in the air, the first thing you want to do is locate the uh, rear cross stay. Meanwhile, I'm going to flash all the tools you need at the bottom of the screen. Yours should look like this. If it does not, you may have these protective casings on the back. So just real quick, if you have them, I'll show you how to remove them. There's two little clips per protective casing, which you just remove the tab. Once you pop it off, it just pulls right out. And this is what the clip looks like. So if you have that, uh, that way you can expose this cross stay. So going back to the cross stay, there are two bolts that we have to remove. One up top and one on bottom. They're both 18 millimeter. And here's a better view of it right here. It's kind of hidden on the uh, rear control arm. But the problem bolt is on the passenger side. Um, and as you go to back this out, it's going to want to hit the gas tank. So I'm going to drop the subframe a bit to give me some room, which is four bolts. One here, one there, and an identical two on the other side, being right there, and tucked back over here. Don't worry, it's not going to fall on you. This is the two bolts on the passenger side. You may want to wear some eye probe. This little debris is hitting me in the eyes right now, so I'm just not even looking. <laughs> and do the other two on the driver's side. Once you have the subframe unbolted, it'll just lower down. You don't have to use one of these load bearing jacks. Um, I'm just slowly lowering it to see how far it'll drop. Um, but once again, it won't fall on you. So let's see how much play we have within the subframe. Yeah, plenty of play. So let's just start with the hardest side first, which is the passenger side. We'll put an 18 millimeter socket on this uh, bolt and hit the air gun on the nut once again 18 millimeter takes two hands so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and then once it's out you can see the bolt uh, wants to hit this plastic gas tank right here so you just pull down on the subframe to get some clearance uh, off camera I'm gonna get a guy to help me and just pull on the subframe while I wiggle this bolt out and once it's out, it just drops right down. Okay, now for the bolt on the control arm. The nut on the other end is locking, so there's no reason to hold it with a crescent wrench. Take some coaxing. There we go. And voila, one side is done. Now as for the other side, it's a little bit easier, but I'm not gonna drop the exhaust right here. So it makes it hard for the air gun to get a good angle. So I'm just gonna take a 18 millimeter wrench once again and put it on the, the nut and use a ratchet to work the bolt. Okay, and then once the nut's out, set it down right here. And with the exhaust in the way, I don't want to drop the exhaust. You can, but notice the mallet. There's really no way to 
get at it and push that bolt out. So one alternative, which I'm going to do, is just grab a pry bar. And then just very gently pry up on the bolt while pushing up on the cross stay. Uh, just to keep the holes aligned and, and allowing that bolt to come out freely. You can also take a screwdriver and a mallet, preferably a metal mallet. I have a rubber one. But once again, with the exhaust pipe there, it's an odd angle. It's worth a shot if you want to try it. Really, it's easy just to keep on wiggling the bolt and pushing up on the cross stay. Um, and this bolt's going to want to interfere with the sway bar a little bit, but it's a little... There it is. And the 18 millimeter bolt on the driver's side control arm too. This is just a 18 millimeter half inch drive socket with a bar slid across to give me some real torque there. Um, yeah, once you get it broken loose, it's, it's pretty easy, but allows me to do it one handed while recording with the other hand. Okay, now just using a pry bar once again, I just break this free and cringe as it clings on my Klingons and take the pry bar again and work the top. Now, learn from my mistake here and I think it's better to do what I did on the passenger side and release the top of the cross stay first. Um, otherwise, when you wiggle on it and the bottom end is loose, it wants to jostle around on you, as you can see right here. So do the top first and then the bottom. And once both the old cross stays are removed, it's time to prep the new ones for fitting. Okay, I'm just going to put my bolts right here. There's the locking nut that we saw earlier. And the upper bolt. I just like to keep them in one spot so I don't lose them. So now we're going to take our, our new um, cross stays that are fully adjustable. These ones I got off Rock Auto. There's plenty of brands that they offer. Apparently this is a Saturn piece, but it'll pop up under Saab 9.5. Um, this is the Moog brand. That's the part number if you need it. There's some other brands like AC Delco, but Moog is one that I've never had issues with and uh, so, somewhat fond of. What I'm going to do is just compare it to the old cross stay and make sure I get the length right. So checking the length is important. I mean, you, it's, it's, you can only get it close. Keep in mind this car is going to go in for an alignment. But how you extend these, it is, uh, you got these two locking nuts. Just loosen them. They are reverse threaded, so this one's going to be righty-loosey. And then just adjust the middle piece, uh, turning it so both ends extend equally, helps to hold down on one end. And just make sure the length lines up pretty closely. And I'm just going to hand tighten these so they stay tight when I put it back in. There we go. So I got the control arm in just uh, hand tightened in there. And as far as the upper end, it's going to take some, some coaxing. Uh, once again, a mallet comes in handy. And I'm going to enlist my helper too to help me get this thing in place. If you can't get it lined up exactly, uh, sometimes putting a screwdriver in the hole and prying to make sure they're all lined up helps. But once it's in, I'm going to put this bolt in backwards with the nut towards the tank. Hit it with the gun. I've already got it tight, just hitting it again. And that's the upper end. The lower end, I'm reusing the Moog, or uh, bolts, the new bolts. 
not reusing the saw bolts, which this one comes with a 18 millimeter nut, which just get a crescent wrench on there to hold it. And then a, a 17 millimeter nut now, or a bolt now with the, the Moog hardware. So putting two wrenches on there helps just to kind of work them both in opposite directions. There's the 18 mil on the nut and the 17 mil on the bolt. Do the same for the other side, and once you're all done, uh, just put the subframe back up. Tighten it all the way down. 18 millimeter once again. Yeah. Hit it again just to make sure it's tight. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Off to the alignment shop. Okay, and once you get it uh, back from the alignment shop, uh, I went ahead and put four fresh Pirelli tires on here. And I can't help but take her out on the open road. Get her up to 70, 80. Um, it is running extremely smooth now, uh, plus uh, the tires I have on are a lot quieter. Um, very impressed with this. So yeah, I certainly recommend it if it's an upgrade uh, you're able to do. I hope that video helped. Um, thank you guys for watching. Safe stopping, everybody.